Ah, Bugs Life, one of the more underrated of the Disney and Pixar films. So what's the story? Well, in my eyes, it's kind of a remake of Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai. You have an oppressed village of people, or in this case, ants, that are being terrorized by a gang, er, grasshoppers. Eventually the people, or the ants, get so fed up with it that they go out and hire samurai, or in this case, circus performers, to come back home and fight off the evil gang and free their village, er, colony. Now I'm actually really excited to talk about what I do love about this movie, so first I'm going to talk about what I don't like about the movie. And it's only a couple of things. First of all, I'm not really a big fan of the protagonist flick. He's not a terrible character, but I don't know, kind of starting near the third act, he starts to get on my nerves. First of all, the movie sets up his character to be an inventor, which is really cool and has a lot of potential, but they don't really go anywhere with it. It's only in the beginning and kind of near the end where they actually have some kind of a payoff for it. Now, I know some of you are going to argue that he built a freaking fake bird, but that wasn't even his idea. It was the princess's idea, and he just kind of, well, stole it. Yeah, well, I, don't, I guess, you know, maybe I have a... Say that again? I said, even Hopper's afraid of birds. To properly illustrate what I don't like about Flick, I'm going to compare A Bug's Life to another one of my favorite movies, The Three Amigos. Again, they have kind of the same plot. You got the oppressed village, the performers that are mistaken to be great fighters, the reveal that they're actually not. But here's where the differences are. In The Three Amigos, after the cat's out of the bag, the Amigos feel sorry for themselves for about, what, a minute? And then they set out to rescue the damsel in distress and beat the bad guys. But in A Bug's Life, Flick just lies his ass off and convinces all the other characters to lie too. Oh, 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 this is perfect. We can get rid of Hopper and no one has to know that I messed up. That's not exactly the greatest message to send to kids. And it also leads to kind of a poor third act because everyone does the whole moping thing for about 20 damn minutes. You know, they do the whole misunderstanding thing where the main character's lie is revealed and he goes off and sulks for an hour while some crappy pop song plays, usually with an acoustic guitar, but sometimes a piano. I don't know, if you ask me, I wouldn't have minded at all if A Bug's Life just flat out ripped off the climax from Three Amigos. Have the princess be kidnapped by the grasshoppers, or the queen, whatever. And after like two minutes of sulking, have Flick and the circus bugs infiltrate the grasshoppers lair, fight the bad guys, and get the queen and or princess back. It'd be a lot more of an exciting climax than dragging your feet for 20 damn minutes. And then honestly, the climax that it does have is... Well, it's okay. It's not awful. It's just kind of a letdown. And then the other thing that I'm not really a fan of is this character. <laughs> Where's the food? I've noticed that he's in every single serious scene, and he kind of just threatens to break the mood. I mean, I know he's just there for comic relief, but isn't that what these two are here for? Now that's funny. I mean, hell, all of the circus bugs are kind of there for comic relief, so we don't really need this guy. Alright, enough of the whining. What do I like? Well, honestly, everything else. I really, really like the humor. They do a lot of creative things with the bugs. I'm lost! I love how Disney and Pixar were thinking so small with the movie. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you look at Toy Story, they had to depict our world from the eyes of toys, making it much bigger. And in A Bug's Life, they had to make our world seem even bigger because they were going from a toy's point of view to an insect's point of view. The stick bug Slim's dry sense of humor cracks me up every single time. Get ready to do the Robin Hood act. Oh, I want to be Little John. What part can I play? My sword! Swish, swish, clang, clang. I like how there's actually a little kid character that has a good arc, serves a purpose of the story, and isn't totally fuck annoying. I like that one really sick fucked up Frankenstein grasshopper, what the hell is up with that? But the thing I love most is the villain. Hopper. Hopper is not only my favorite Disney villain, he's one of my favorite villains, period. Think about it, they managed to make a grasshopper intimidating. Grasshoppers are like an inch long in real life, but you totally forget that when you're watching Hopper on screen. I think a lot of that has to do with both his design and Kevin Spacey's chilling voice performance. Are you saying I'm stupid? No. Do I look stupid to you? Let's just think about the logic, shall we? Let's just think about it for a second. If it was up there, would I be coming down here to your level looking for it? 
And it's kind of cool seeing him express more than just, you know, stern-faced all the time. I mean, yeah, he does look pissed off most of the time. But you also see him getting massages, you see him enjoying the circus performance, and he loves his mommy. I swear, if I hadn't promised Mother on her deathbed that I wouldn't kill you, I would kill you! Also, Hopper's one of the few Disney villains that actually manages to rack up a body count. I mean, yeah, Scar did, of course, and that particular kill had a lot more depth and weight to it, but hardly any Disney villains can say they actually legitimately killed somebody. And shit, Hopper kills his own men. Overall, I still think that A Bug's Life is severely underrated, and if you haven't seen it yet, you definitely need to. But even if you have seen it, I dare you to go back and watch it again, because I think it definitely deserves a second opinion. You ants have a nice summer. Let's ride! Yeah! Yeah!